Mike Chatter with Purple Color Life. You can see in this video, we're going to do an oil change on the Cub Cadet 149 hydrostatic tractor. Now this tractor and other Cub Cadet tractors from this era of the late 70s, early 80s would have a very similar oil change procedure. So you can use this as a reference for any of these Cub Cadet with the single cylinder Kohler engines. Just refer to your manual for your specific machine. But some things I recommend you have before you get started, some nitrile gloves to keep your hands from getting dirty. You know, this is purple collar life. That means that during the daytime, my job is a white collar job. So even though I'm doing some purple collar work here tonight, changing the oil in the tractor, I don't wanna to go to work in the morning with my hands all oily and grease under the fingernails. So it's a good idea to have a good set of gloves, not only because you wanna keep your hands clean, but because it's also not a good idea to get used motor oil on your skin. So I'll put Amazon links to all these things down below, but some nitrile gloves. I use the SAE 30 Rotella diesel oil. Now these old Kohler engines work good on a straight viscosity oil. So not like the 10W30, but just a straight 30 weight. So that's what I've got here. I've got a funnel for refilling and a funnel for draining. I'll see which one works better where because the drain's a little bit tricky to get to when you've got the mower deck on, but I don't wanna take the mower deck off right now. Also a drain pan that'll hold about one and a half quarts. The capacity in this tractor is about one and a half quarts in the Kohler engine that's in the machine. I did pull the tractor up onto a couple two by fours or two by sixes, just to give me a little bit more room to work. And the drain is actually on the rear of the engine. I'll show you where that is. So looking down from the starter generator, under the tractor, right there is your drain. You can see that's at the back of the engine, so it doesn't hurt to have it propped up a little bit in the front. But you can also see it would drain directly onto the mule drive belt, which is right here, and the mule drive system. So that's why I'm gonna use the funnel to direct it around here to the catch pan. I wanted to show you the setup here. You can see I've got the pan under the front end. If we swivel here to the side, I've got that funnel straight below the drain that will direct the oil down into that drain pan. So that's the system I use. I have the deck most of the way down so that that funnel can sit below the mule drive and just underneath that oil drain plug. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the dipstick out just so that it can breathe. It will drain a little bit better. And the engine is warm just from pulling it in here. Now it's not hot, I haven't been out mowing for hours but just warm enough that that oil will drain a little bit faster without burning me. Got my glove on my left hand here. My right hand isn't gloved just because I need to go to turn the camera on and off easier and it's hard to do with gloves on. This is a 9 16 wrench. I've switched to a 916 socket so that I've got the 6 point instead of the 12 point. Just to keep from rounding that off, it's a little bit tighter than I thought it was going to be. It's way tighter than it should be for sure. sure most of you probably know this trick, but if you need a little bit more leverage, you can grab a pipe, put it over the end of your wrench. As long as you're not really torquing on it, make sure that I'm up on the bolt good and snug here. That just gives me a little bit more pushing power to break that loose.
And that's all it needed was just a little bit more, and I didn't want to push too hard. It was a little bit warm though, so I'm gonna go back to my wrench. Make sure my funnel's lined up. See how my system's working. The oil is draining out of the drain, down through the funnel, and into my catch pan. So no mess, nice and clean. We'll let that drip out, and then we'll put the plug back in it. Pulled the funnel out. Now just get snug it with the wrench, not over tighten, just snug. Okay, now we're going to pull the dipstick out, put our narrow funnel in, wipe the dipstick off. You can see between here and here are our fill ranges above those dots below those dots and it actually has a serial number on the dipstick now we're going to put our oil in like i said this is a shell rotella t1 straight grade 30 weight oil now if you read any of the forums bob is the oil guy is a great oil forum uh, but also the Cub Cadet forums are great for finding out what oil works best in these older machines. And a lot of people recommend this diesel oil at a straight 30 weight because it's got one of the highest zinc contents in it, which is the best for these old Kohler engines. Now remember we want to do a quart and a half. This is a four quart bottle. So we're just going to pour slow. It is a narrow funnel. We have to let it breathe so that the oil will drain down in there. And that's almost one quart. There is no oil filter on these older Cub Cadets, so we don't have to worry about the capacity of the filter. One and a half quarts will fill the crankcase of the engine, and that's all that we need. You don't want to overfill. So we are going to let that drain down in, out of the funnel. Pull the funnel out for a second. Put our dipstick in. We are within that range. We're a little bit low. So I'm going to add just a little more. You can always run it, check the oil, and add more afterwards. Now that we've let that all drain down out of the funnel, pull the funnel back out. It'll still be dripping. So I set it on top of that 2x4 that I had put down here. We will wipe the dipstick, put it down in, pull it out, and hopefully you can see there, we are at that level right there. So right about the middle. We're going to go ahead and run it right there, and then after a while we'll check it. Pull the pan out of here. I always like to look at the oil that came out. Look for any pieces of metal or anything that's unusual. This oil looks good. It actually wasn't even that dirty. There weren't hardly any hours on this machine, but when it doesn't get run a lot and it sits for a year, you should still change the oil. Make sure that you always dispose of your waste oil properly. 
Um, I don't have one, but I like the idea of those waste oil heaters that some people use to heat their garage. I think that's a great idea. But in our case, we can always take it out to Walmart, or a lot of times I'll put an ad on Facebook and say I've got some waste oil once I've, you know, when you change the oil in the F350 diesel, that's 15 quarts at a time. So you do accumulate quite a bit of waste oil. I put an ad on Facebook and usually within an hour, someone contacts me and wants the waste oil. I like to use an older bottle that I've used from a previous oil change as my waste oil bottle. There are waste oil bottles, I'll put links down below from Amazon that you can buy. They're a little bit bigger jug. But what I found is I like them to be in something that I don't mind. If someone from Facebook comes and picks up those jugs, they don't have to bring them back, they can keep this. And I'll also mention, I tested this full synthetic 5W20 in a vehicle, Amazon Basics Oil, and it's been working great. So, you know, I've, I've usually been pretty picky about the oil I use. I like Mobile One. Um, I like a synthetic blend from Motorcraft and all my Ford vehicles. But I've been really happy with this Amazon Basics Oil. And if you check Bob's the oil guy on that forum, this actually tests pretty good. And there are YouTube videos of people testing this. So here's my pan of oil. I've got the funnel in the jug. I like to pour where I can see how full it's getting. So we're starting out at just under two quarts. This also gives me another chance to look at the oil that I'm pouring, just to make sure it looks good. You can see it's still got some brown to it. It's not totally black, but it has been in there for a year, so it was time for a change. And we came up to just about three quarts, and we were not quite at two quarts, so just a little under a quart and a half, but not bad. Now I like to stockpile oil ahead a little bit, so on this jug, I'll write used so that when I put it in the garage, I know this was the used waste oil and not some good oil to put in a vehicle. So here's my oil shelf, my stockpile of oils. You can see I've got oil in advance. I use the T6 Rotella and the F350 6.0 diesel. And then here's the filter for that. And then I've got Mobile One. I've got some oil for in uh, other pieces of equipment. Gear lube, gear and axle lube, oil filters bought ahead for our vehicles, air filters. I do have little tags that say what they were for. Now these need updated. That says Explorer. That says Open. But it is a pretty good system to keep your oil on the shelf in advance so when you're ready for an oil change you have it you don't have to go out to the store and buy the oil and filter that you need so oil replaced in the cup cadet 149 i checked the air filter and we've got ethanol free gasoline we should be good to go go ahead and close the hood here and do a start up bath 